Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. I am going to read uh, just a little bit from the original introduction to the Penguin edition of Silas Marner um, by Q.D. Levis. It is in Silas Marner that we come closest to a George Eliot who is everywhere present in her letters and journal and in other people's reminiscences of her, but who has been buried by the legend of the masculine blue stocking, the editor of the Benthamite Review, the admirer of Comte, the student of all the ancient and modern languages, the friend of Herbert Spencer and the consort of G. H. Lewis, that middleman of all the arts and sciences. This other George Eliot reread The Pilgrim's Progress while reading the newly published Origin of Species and having reported of the Darwin that it is not impressive from want of luminous and orderly presentation, went on to note that she was profoundly struck with the true genius manifested in the simple, vigorous, rhythmic style of Bunyan. Acquaintance, I'm skipping a little bit here, acquaintance with her life is still best made through the volume called George Eliot's Life, published by her widower, J.W. Cross, which he made out of selections from her journal and letters and the reminiscences he collected from her relatives and friends. Cross's account of his first meeting with his future wife satisfies one's notions of her personality, but he gives a very unexpected insight into the Lewis home in 1878 when G. H. Lewis was near his end. Between bouts of pain he sang through with great brio, though not much voice, the greater portion of the tenor part in the Barber of Seville, George Eliot playing his accompaniment and both of them thoroughly enjoying the fun. George Eliot was nearly 60 at this time, so the anecdote should correct any false idea that she was a solemn prig. I haven't completely read the, the original introduction by Q.D. Levis, though I'm very much interested to finish it. I have, however, finished the novel Silas Marner by George Eliot and just enjoyed it. It is my third um, Eliot novel, and she is on track to becoming my most read novelist. Uh, I have to read a few more yet, but I see no reason to suspect that it will not happen, provided I have life enough left in me to do so. Uh, I thought I was picking up a different one. It must have been Adam Bede that I was thinking of, but I got this. And um, it turns out my, my favorite book of all the books I read last year was Romola by George Lewis. And that was a big progress, a, a project, if you know her work. And she was doing all the research for that and then suddenly decided she had to knock out this tale. And it's, it's very slight, uh, which was why I dove into it. I was choosing between this or George Gissing's New Grub Street and Gissing uh, rests at 550 pages, I believe, and I just did not feel up to it. Now, throughout this book, uh, there are moments when I was a bit, uh, I don't know, disheartened by the characters. I wasn't loving them. I don't know if you read novels to love the characters, though. And with Elliot, she... Uh, as in Romola, she commits little sins here and there, which I have noticed I allow her to commit. Things that I overlook in Eliot, which would condemn another, a different novelist 
out of hand. So one might, must say that I am turning into a fan. I did initially feel that I was falling in love with this woman and uh, uh, nothing in this narrative has done anything to dislodge that feeling from me. So I will leave it there. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel.